Good morning everyone, my name is Athenaise Boukli, I'm a French pulmonologist and it's a great pleasure to uh, talk about causes and classification of pulmonary hypertension. Here are my disclosures. So, you can see here the diagnostic algorithm from the last European guidelines on pulmonary hypertension and this algorithm includes three steps. The first one is suspicion, mainly based on symptoms and clinical signs. The second step of the algorithm is detection, based on both lung and heart assessment, and it includes echocardiography. And finally, the third step of this algorithm is confirmation of the diagnosis of pH using right at cat Let's start with the first step of this algorithm, suspicion, and we have previously seen that this, um, this step is mainly based on symptoms and clinical signs. It's important to know that uh, the first symptom of pulmonary hypertension, and often the only one, is dyspnea, which is the shortness of breath. Another common symptom is fatigue, which, like dyspnea, is not specific to the disease. If you now look at the signs, the clinical signs of pulmonary hypertension, they are usually unremarkable, but in advanced form of pH, we can observe signs of right heart failure, including peripheral edema or distended jugular veins. And it explains why a patient journey from the onset of symptoms to the diagnosis of pH can take a long time, sometimes several years, because none of the clinical signs and symptoms are specific to the disease. The second step of the algorithm is detection based on um, heart assessment and also lung assessment. And the minimal evaluation should uh, include um, echocardiography, among other things. So, in case of pulmonary hypertension suspicion based on symptoms and clinical signs, which are, I uh, remind you, non -specific, not specific to the disease, it's recommended to perform an echocardiography, which is the first line non invasive diagnostic investigation. Uh, tool. And based on this test, we will assign an echocardiographic probability of pulmonary hypertension, which will be either low, intermediate, or high. And in case of intermediate or high probability of pulmonary hypertension, patients will be referred to a pH center for further assessments, including right at CAT. So this is the third step of the algorithm, so the confirmation of the disease, and it requires to perform right heart catheterization. So right heart cat is considered as the gold standard for diagnosing and classifying pulmonary hypertension. And this is important to understand that um, it's recommended to perform right at CAT in experience centers. That's why some patients will be referred in another hospital to perform a right at CAT. It is important to understand that not all pulmonary hypertension is the same. pH is a general term to uh, describe high blood pressure in pulmonary arteries from any cause. Um, patients will be classified into one of the five groups of pH according to this classification, this clinical classification of pulmonary hypertension. So, there are five different groups of pH based on different causes. The classification reflects the whole clinical context, and in each group, patients share similar pathophysiological mechanisms, clinical presentation, hemodynamic characteristics, and also uh, therapeutic management. 
let's start with the first group, group 1, which refers to pulmonary arterial hypertension, also called PAH. So uh, it is caused by pulmonary vascular remodeling. The arteries um, in the lungs become uh, thickened and stiff. Inside this group, there are several types of pulmonary arterial hypertension, idiopathic PAH, heritable PAH. PAH can be associated with past or present drug use, such as the use of methamphetamine or certain diet uh, pills. And finally, PH can also develop in association with other medical conditions, including congenital heart disease, liver disease, HIV or uh, connective tissue diseases. So idiopathic PAH, also called IPAH, is PAH that occurs um, without a clear cause. It means it is neither heritable nor associated PAH. Heritable PAH um, is linked to genes that are inherited from family members. All these genes are transmitted in an autosomal dominant manner with an incomplete penetrance. Don't worry, I'm going to explain. Dominant means that a single copy of the mutated gene from one parent is enough to cause the disorder. And incomplete penetrance means that some patients will not automatically develop a PAH even if they have a mutant allele. Another trigger is required, such as an environmental uh, factor to uh, finally develop the disease. So you can see here a list of uh, genes that can be uh, involved in PAH. But there is also another gene, uh, which is called EF2AK4, which um, induced uh, a specific form of PAH called PVOD, for pulmonary veno-occlusive disease. So in this specific case, uh, the transmission is autosomal recessive, so it requires two copies of the mutated gene, one from each parent, to um, uh, finally induce the disease. So among the other genes in PAH, BMPR2 is uh, the um, most frequent gene induced in PAH, and in PVOD, EF2AK4 um, is the gene uh, of heritable uh, PAH can be associated with exposure to certain drugs or toxins, particularly to appetite suppressant drugs such as aminorex, uh, fenfluoramine derivatives, or uh, more recently benfluorex. And these drugs have been confirmed to be risk factors for PAH, that's why they have been withdrawn uh, from the market. But PAH can be also a rare complication of desatinib that was approved as a first line for chronic myelocytic leukemia, for example, and other drugs have been also um, found to be associated, possibly associated with PAH. PAH can also be a complication of other medical conditions, uh, such as congenital heart disease, liver disease, HIV, and uh, connective tissue diseases such as scleroderma or lupus. So it's important to understand that PAH can be a complication of other medical conditions. And finally, pulmonary veno-occlusive disease, also called PVOD, is due to both pulmonary artery and pulmonary venular uh, remodeling. And you can observe here on the slide typical signs of PVOD um, that you can see on CT. And you can see here mediastinal adenopathy, one glass opacities, and septal lines, uh, which are quite typical to the uh, specific diagnostic of PVOD. 
So let's move to the second group of pH called uh, pH associated with left heart disease. In this group of pH, the arteries and lungs are not as thick or stiff as pAH, but there are problems with how the heart squeezes or relaxes, or problems with the valves uh, of the left side of the heart. And because of this, the left heart is unable to keep up with the blood returning from the lungs, causing a backup of blood which raises pulmonary vein pressure. And group 2 is the most common form of pH. Group 2 uh, is also called post-capillary pulmonary hypertension and the key tool to identify left heart disorders is echocardiography. Let's move to uh, the group 3 of pH, also called pH associated with lung disease. Group 3 pH includes pH due to hypoxia, uh, which is a low oxygen levels, but it can also be due to a chronic lung diseases such as obstructive lung disease, where the lung airways narrow and make it harder to exhale. So this is the case in COPD, but also in emphysema. And among diseases inducing pH in group 3, we can also um, find um, restrictive lung diseases um, in which the lungs have a tough time expanding when one inhales. So interstitial lung diseases uh, or pulmonary fibrosis are some examples of uh, restrictive lung diseases. Group 4 is called pH associated with chronic pulmonary artery obstruction and inside this group there are CTEF for chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. CTEF can occur when the body is not able to dissolve a blood clot in a pulmonary arteries. This can lead to scare tissue in the blood vessels of the lungs which block normal blood flow and make the right side of the heart um, work harder. CTEF um, diagnosis requires a VQ lung scan that you can see on this slide, but we will also perform a lung CT. And this type of pulmonary hypertension is unique because it can potentially be cured through um, a surgery called pulmonary thromboendectomy. And this surgery is able to remove the blood clots, as you can see here uh, on top of this slide. However, not all CTEF patients are eligible for this surgery. And patients not eligible for surgery can be treated with angioplasty and or uh, drugs. And finally, group 5 is where uh, pH is secondary to other diseases in ways that are uh, not well understood. Inside this group, you can uh, find some hematological disorders, systemic disorders, metabolic disorders, a chronic renal failure, but also uh, fibrosing mediastinitis or pulmonary tumor thrombotic microangiopathy. And a frequent cause in group 5 pH is sarcoidosis associated pulmonary hypertension. And this specific cause of pH is classified in group 5 because there are several mechanisms inducing pH. To sum up, right at CAT is the only confirmative diagnostic tool of pH and the classification of pH categorizes patients into five groups. And if we look at the, uh, the prevalence of the disease, it's important to know that um, group 2, uh, pH associated with left, left heart disease, is the most common cause of pH. And the second most common cause of pH is group 3, pH associated with lung disease. But you can see here on this slide that PAH for group 1 and CTEF group 4 
are very rare form of pulmonary hypertension. Finally, it's important to correctly classify a patient into one of the five groups of pH because each etiology, each diagnostic of pH has its own treatment. For example, we have uh, several drugs available to treat PAH. We have one uh, inhaled drug to treat uh, PAH associated with lung disease. Um, and finally, group 4 can be treated with uh, surgery or angioplasty in combination with uh, drugs. So, to conclude this presentation, we have seen that symptoms of pH are non-specific to the disease. Uh, we can have a shortness of breath in other uh, lung diseases or cardiac diseases. Right hat cat is, is the only confirmative diagnostic tool. And finally, at the end of the diagnostic workup, we have to classify uh, patients in one of the uh, five groups of pH, and this is very important as uh, the treatment approach is depending of the classification of pH. Thank you for your attention.